What is up, everybody? We are back. What an incredible U.S. Open while I feel for Rory McIlroy. Bogey in three of the last four, missing two putts inside of four feet. How about Bryson DeChambeau? Had an outright on him at 20 to 1. I think I mentioned it on this video last week. Hopefully a lot of you were on it as well. Just an incredible Sunday. I mean, Bryson had the lead, lost the lead, tied it back up, was down one, and then, you know, 18, he's under the tree, has to kind of just punch it out. Ends up being in the bunker 55 yards away. If you ask any pro, they say that's the hardest shot in golf and uh, sticks it to three feet. It was incredible. Uh, I was watching it with my family on Father's Day and told all my nieces and nephews if Bryson makes his putt, I'll use 20 bucks. So I'm out 100 bucks, but ended up winning a lot more than that on the outright. So incredible week, one that I will never forget. And now we turn our attention to the Travelers Championship, a little bit of a strange spot in the PJ Tour schedule. So we had the Memorial two weeks ago, then we had the US Open. Now we have another signature event. So most of the best golfers in the world are going to be teeing it up for the third week in a row. We could see some fatigue set in, especially given how difficult Memorial and the US Open were. I mean, those are two of the toughest courses that these guys are going to see all year. So we could see some fatigue set in. Honestly, I don't think it's bad if um, golfers miss the cut in one of the last two events. It might actually be good for their energy and their motivation for this event in particular. Now, TBC River Highlands, one of the shorter courses on the PGA Tour, par 70, 6,835 yards. Typically one of the easier courses. It's been 22nd or easier in terms of difficulty each of the last four years. Uh, we've seen a very interesting mix of winners, Keegan Bradley, Xander, Harris English, Dustin Johnson, Ches Reeve. So really any type of golfer can contend here. Um, and this is one of the few courses where accuracy means a little bit more than distance. Obviously, we want a combination of both if possible. But the fairways here, they're pretty wide at like 250 yards, and they just get narrower and narrower as you get closer to the green. At 300 yards, they come into about 25 yards wide on average. So that is why you're going to see a lot of guys take less than driver off the tee on some of these holes. Um, the fairway or the greens are pretty small, 5,000 square feet on average. They feature bent grass and poana. Uh, but even though they're small, they're still easy to hit. The field hit these greens at 73% clip last year. And I believe this was a full field event last year. So um, it wasn't nearly as strong of a field as we're going to see this week with the signature event. And Honestly, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm looking at total driving, strokes gain approach, birdie or better percentage, strokes gain putting, maybe a little course history. Um, this has been fairly predictive year in and year out when it comes to course history compared to other venues on the PJ Tour uh, and recent form as well. I'm not going to be looking at strokes gain around the green all that much just because these greens are so easy to hit that you're going to have fewer scrambling opportunities. So guys that struggle around the green, uh, I don't mind looking at them. This week, uh, let's get to the overall model. So yeah, pretty small weight to off the tee. Got 9% to total driving, 16% uh, to strokes gain approach. Again, only 3% to around the green, 8% to putting. I don't mind bumping this up if you want. Um, you can do the bent POA splits if you would like. Uh, pretty or better percentage at 6%, bogey avoidance at 3%. I did course history at 6%, which is a little bit more than I usually do just because it has been predictive over the years. Um, Data Golf's course fit rankings, uh, strokes gained on par 70, which uh, comes from the rabbit hole at Bedsford. If you want to check that out, we've got some discount links for you. And then strokes gained in Strong's Field also comes from the rabbit hole. Um, the form, I have it broken down into short-term, mid-term, long-term. Short-term is going to be the last 24 months or the last three months. Sorry, the last 24 rounds over the last three months. Mid-term is going to be the last 50 rounds or the last six months. Long-term is going to be the last 18 months or the last 100 rounds. And then wanted to know, we got strokes gain approach expected. So this is the little calculation that I come up with each week. Um, it takes a look at how far golfers are expected to hit their approach shots and how often they gain strokes from those different, you know, approach shot um, lengths. And then it comes up with uh, who I think is going to gain the most strokes on approach this week. So we have Scheffler, Connors, Hoagie, Hideki, Glover, who has let me down the last couple of weeks in DFS. Um, then Finau, Hovland, Xander, Henley, and JT. I think Rory was number 10, but he has withdrawn. Um, he's going to take some time off before the Scottish Open and the Open Championship. Let's get to the overall rankings. Look, Scotty Scheffler was pretty good last week. Tita Green just couldn't putt. 
Um, he's still number one in the model, but Xander's a close second. He's also going to be lower owned and much cheaper. So if I'm deciding between the two, I'm obviously, or I'm honestly going to go with Xander. I just think, I don't know, at a course where it's going to be a birdie fest, the winning score is going to be at least 20 under par. You're going to have to make putts. And Scheffler was visibly frustrated last week. Um, I think he only made four birdies on, over the entire four rounds. And he's been decent here, but I mean, Xander's been a little bit better. Xander's number one in the stat ranks. I don't know. I, I think Xander makes some sense this week if you are looking to pay up. Again, there's no cut this week, only 72 golfers in the field. So if you do want to play the stars and scrubs angle, you can, but we're going to get to it here in a minute. The 6K range on DraftKings is pretty ugly. Um, so Colin Morikawa makes a lot of sense. He's been playing great. Um, he had a bad Friday, still, you know, bounced back with a good weekend, finished T14. That is at least seven straight top 20 finishes for him. Uh, the ball striking's back. The short game's been good all year. So I certainly don't mind looking to Morikawa in any format. Um, Ludwig Oberg struggled on the weekend. You know, he had the lead. I think he was at 600 par heading into Saturday's round. Um, ended up going 73, 73, something like that. Uh, but he was T24 here last year. We know the the talents there. I wouldn't say it's the best course fit for him, but he seems to play well everywhere. So um, he projects pretty well for me. The guys that I have currently tagged as core plays uh, at rotogrinders.com in lineup HQ, we have Russell Henley, Corey Connors. So Henley's just been on fire. I mean, just so consistent. He's accurate off the tee, great iron player. He's always been good around the green too. And this year he's been a great putter. So he doesn't have a weakness. It's like a perfect course fit for him. He's finished in the top 20 in four of the last six years here, or four of the last six attempts that he's played. And then you have Corey Connors, five straight top 26 finishes. Um, he's probably a top three ball striker in this field, and he's gained around the green in three straight. He's gained putting in two of the last three. So if he can just make a little bit of strides with that short game, I think he can you know, contend at a course like this. My pick to win is going to be Victor Hovland. 9,300, missed the cut last week at the U.S. Open. I know that's not ideal, but you got to add some context. So struggled on Thursday, bounced back with a 68 on Friday, missed the cut on the number, so it was really close. And if you look at his stats, he gained off the tee, he gained on approach, he gained putting, he lost three and a half strokes in two rounds around the green. That's just something that, you know, those were incredibly tough greens, and he's never really been known for his, you know, around the green play anyway. Now we get a course that's going to be easy, the green's going to be hit, at a high rate, he can probably hit 75 to 80% of these greens in regulation. So he's not going to have to scramble that much. Um, the game was trending in in, a right, in the right direction before last week. So I love Victor Hovland to bounce back. Uh, I like him uh, as an outright and as a play in DFS. Hideki continues to play well, back-to-back -to -back top 10s. He hasn't, you know, teed it up three times in a row very often the last couple of years. So maybe he continues it. Maybe... He hits him. I'm not really sure, but he was T13 here last year. Does project pretty well for me. So hit the gala. He's been very good off the tee. He's been very good on approach. He's been a very good putter. The round the green game has kind of abandoned him the last, I don't know, year of play or so. But again, that's not a big issue. He probably should have won here in 2022. Um, if you remember, he drove it into the lip of the bunker on 18. He tried to go for the green. He could have just laid up, tried to make par from 80, 90 yards in the fairway. Instead, he tried to Go for glory, hit the hit the lip, and uh, you know he ended up making bogey or double, um, and that's the year Xander ended up winning. Patrick Cantlay, no idea what to do with him. So after just some really bad golf, T three last week, played pretty solid all week. The stats were good. Then he laid his course history, T fifteen or better in six straight events here. But I mean, man, that could take a toll, right? You know, being in the final group or the final two groups at the, the US Open. That's a grind. So I don't know. 15% ownership doesn't project that well for me. I'm, I'm a little bit torn on Cantlay this week. I think it's a good course for Tommy, even though he hasn't played that well here over the years. Sam Burns is coming in with some good form, but man, it's all been the short game. If you look at his ball striking numbers, it just hasn't been very good. So I'll probably be underweight on Burns. Finau, I worry about the putter at a birdie fest, but Four straight top 20s. He's striking it as well as anyone right now, especially with the irons. Keegan Bradley won here last year. Um, he's also got a second place and an eighth place finish at this event over the years. Brian Harmon, this is his happy place. He's finished T8 or better in, I want to say, six of his last nine trips to TPC River Highlands. 
If you look at his recent stats, he's gained 10 strokes on approach over his last five starts. He's a really good putter. Very accurate off the tee. Love Harmon this week. Also love Tom Kim. Um, his game is finally back. I mean, he really struggled last summer, last fall, um, to start this year. Now he's starting to, you know, gain strokes off the tee again. He's hitting a ton of fairways. He's starting to gain strokes on approach. I think he's gained 10.9 strokes over his last three starts. I think it's a great course fit for Tom Kim. So Kim and Harmon, probably my favorites in the A's um, outside of Henley and Connors. And again, I want to be underweight on Scheffler. And so I'm naturally going to be have more balanced builds because I'm not paying for the most expensive guy. Um, so I, I mean, you can build a lineup with four or five AK guys and feel pretty good about it. Um, that's something that I might be doing this week. I like Seth Straka. So his T56 last week doesn't look great on paper, but he gained... I think it was 4.6 strokes ball striking. It was just the short game that let him down. And I mean, look at these recent finishes, fifth, eighth, 12th, fifth, fifth. So he's playing great golf right now. Great bounce back spot for him. Benny on at 21% does scare me a little bit. So he's a bomber. The driver's his biggest weapon. Uh, missed the cut last week. That has not played great here in the past. I can't do it if he's going to be this high owned. I do think this number will come down a little bit, but as of right now, I'm probably going to be out on Benny on, even though he does project pretty well for me. I like Sebez, great iron player, great putter that translates well here. No strong take on Holman Clark. They just haven't played well recently. Um, Adam Scott's been, you know, top 40 machine. He's probably going to finish the top 40 again because that's what he does. Uh, JT, pretty bad miscut last week. He's just been so hit or miss. You never really know what to expect from him. So I could play him in tournaments, but not going to look his way as a core play or anything like that. Lowry. His putter worries me a little bit in a in a birdie fest. I do like Siwoo Kim. He's probably a top 10 TD Green guy in the field. Finally gained strokes putting last week. Horschel's been playing better. He's gaining strokes across the board. Posting nearly one here in 2022. His game's been really good recently. A lot of top 35 finishes. I think he's pretty safe. Good bounce back spot for Sung Jay. pendra has been playing great. I don't know if this is the best course fit for him, but, man, he's just uh, playing with a ton of confidence right now. Um, but I did look at you know, his irons just haven't been that good. He's kind of been off the tee putter type. Um, Hoagie, Hoagie's irons make sense here. I'm trying to see if there's anybody else getting Glover rates out well for me. Um, but the last two events have been kind of scary. English has won here before. Ben Griffin seems like a pretty good course fit. It's weird to see like Speed, Day, and Young project this poorly. Like Ben Griffin has a better rating than them this week. Um, not really sure what that says other than these guys have just been struggling the last few months. Uh, Will Zalatoris is down here quite a ways. My favorite punt is probably going to be Andrew Putnam. 6,400, he's a guy that um, he loses strokes off the tee, but he's actually fairly accurate. Um, he can gain a lot of strokes on approach. He's gained at least four strokes on approach in three of his last nine. Very good putter as well. Pretty good course history. So that'll do it for this week. And if you're an RG Premium member, you can download this model. You can customize it to your own liking. You can play with all the weights up here. Um, and then you can click on the upload tab at the bottom here and it'll automatically change all these fantasy points, uh, for you. And you can upload these right into lineup HQ and build lineups based on your own thoughts, which I think is pretty cool. Um, if you're not an RG premium member, we'd love to have you try it out. I think we've got a deal for combo premium right now. We also have a deal for single month. We also have a deal that you get like a three day package or something like that. So check all that out. Um, and if not, just, Hey, appreciate you watching the video. Hit the thumbs up on your way out. And if you want to join the RG Discord, it's free for everyone. A lot of fun in there each and every week, sweating our lineups and our bets. So with that, going to get out of here. Good luck, everybody. See you next week.